There are portals in the realm of the Spirit that opens up over a place that once God has been encountered in a location, He repetitively visits that location. There is a residue that is left behind. For example, Bethel was a portal. Abraham did sacrifices by Bethel. He encountered God at Bethel. His grandson, Jacob, got to Bethel. And as he walked past Bethel, he had an encounter with God. As he was there, the second place, he saw the angels going from top to bottom. He wrestled an angel there through the night. Where? At a place called Bethel. Which means that because there was altars set up there before, there was a spiritual entity left behind there. A spiritual force from heaven. Residue of an encounter that his grandfather had before. Now if there can be portals from heaven, there are altars and portals of the enemy. 70% of you that are watching are not subscribed to my YouTube channel. So I want to ask you a big favor. If you're enjoying this video, click the thumbs up button. Give us a like. It helps with the algorithm. Subscribe to this channel, but also do not forget to click the notification bell so that you can be notified when we upload any new videos. Let's go back. Thank you so much. If there can be portals from heaven, there are altars and portals of the enemy set up in a place, in a location. And when Satan is worshipped in that location, continuously, and I'm not speaking of worship by putting on a pentagram, I'm speaking of a worship of an entity, whether it's mammon, whether it's racism, whether it's poverty or religion, it feeds a principality and it begins to rule and govern over that city. And it influences the minds of those people. Meaning, if there's a spirit of racism, you will have people in that vicinity be more prone to racism. Unless the kingdom of God can come and displace the kingdom of darkness, plant the kingdom of God. But the kingdom of darkness has to be cast out and replaced by the kingdom of light. It requires a church or a movement or a people that carries the kingdom of God that can preach with a demonstration, that can minister under the anointing of the Holy Ghost to break and shift atmospheres. So there is portals, so with the portals. Another portal was by Jordan River, where Jesus was being baptized by John. John the Baptist in the same spot where he baptized Jesus, baptized his other disciples. In the same spot, Joshua crossed over the Jordan. In the same spot, Elijah, crossed over the Jordan. In the same spot, Elisha came and took the mantle of Elijah and hit the waters and said, Where is the God of Elijah? And power was released and the waters were split. There's something in a right location and there's something in a wrong location. Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James and John his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves and he was transfigured before them. His countenance changed, his face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. Why did he go up a mountain? Why did Jesus walk up to a specific mountain? And behold, so with him Moses and Elijah appeared to him talking with him. So you have Jesus standing on the mountain. Peter, James and John and Moses and Elijah appeared to him. Moses was on a mountaintop and the Bible says when he saw God face to face, the Bible says that the Lord took him and put him into the cleft of a rock, covered him by his hand and moved past him. My face you will not see, but my back you will see. So you're Moses in the cleft of the rock. Now I'm God coming past you. And the Bible says and the Lord passed by him. And he said, my face you will not see, but my back you will see. What does that mean? The, faith, the word face there is not the same as your physical face. When I walk past Roche like this, if he has to look at my face, you will look at everything behind me. But if you look at my back, you will look at where I'm going. And so the Lord said, my face you cannot look because you're not allowed to see anything before time began that was behind me. But you're allowed to see into the future where I'm going. 
And Moses, in that moment, could see up until the cross and even beyond it. And he was, say with me, on a mountain. And the Lord covered him with his hand. And his glory passed by him. And Moses appeared on the mountain by Jesus. So scholars will tell you there's an explanation in the realm of the Spirit when it comes to Moses' experience and Jesus' experience. That when Moses was covered in the glory of God and he saw everything from this moment on in the future, that they say the moment he saw Christ was the moment that Jesus stood on the mountain and saw him. So when you have a space, a plane of point A to point B and time can bend, what is the quickest way from point A to point B is to go straight line. But if I don't want to go straight line, the quickest way is to bend time and obviously bend space and go immediately through. So the Bible says that God inhabits eternity. In fact, it says He inhabits eternity of eternities inside of Him in the book of Psalms. Meaning from point A to point B in eternity, there is no time. Yet He has different eternities in Him. There's no time where He exists. So what happened with Moses on the mountain could be the exact same moment that Jesus encountered him in Matthew 17 verse 3 on the mountain. When Moses was on the mountain, what happened after he encountered God? He came down and his face was shining. Now the scholars will tell you because he looked into the shining face of Jesus in Matthew 17 verse 3. When we see Jesus' face shining like that, and we see Moses' face shining like that coming from the mountain. What is happening? It is their nature that has been turned into a divine nature. Moses being 80 days in the glory of God. No water, no food. His face shines with such brightness that the Israelites had to run away from him 15 miles. They were vomiting and having diarrhea. And the Bible says that at the age of 120, his eyes was not dim and he had the strength of a young man that God had to tell him, go to that mountain and die because you've spent so much time in the glory, your nature has become divine. Moses would have been taken up if God didn't tell him to go die. God can shift time. That's how he uses the principle and the truth and the revelation of redeeming the time. The Bible says that I will restore to you the years that the canker worm took and the years that the enemy stole from you. I will redeem it together. It doesn't matter if you're 50 years old or 60 years old. The moment you experience the glory of God, say with you, there's no time in the spirits.